Yeah, I thought, you know, I played pretty well today. I was just trying to be solid. She's a very aggressive player who can, you know, hit winners and also make mistakes. So uh, I was just trying to be solid and be aggressive when I could. Okay, do you have a question for uh, Congratulations on the win, first of all. Um, how did it feel on the court? I was watching your match from the media box, and mm -hmm. I, had, I felt like a nice cube at the end. Um, <laughs> tough conditions. How did it feel on the court, and what did you have to do you know, to adjust to those conditions? Yeah, um, it was definitely obviously chilly today. As you can tell, I was wearing a, a, long, a long sleeve. And um, yeah, it was definitely slow, but my last round, it was like kind of similar. It was super humid in my last round, but very slow. And today was obviously not humid, more cold, um, but still slow. So it did feel slow, which last year was a, when I played on this court, it was sunny and the ball was bouncing more. So it's definitely like a completely different court depending on the conditions. Hi, Coco. Hi. Uh, you, you talked on court after the match about the idea of not getting mad, not getting distracted, trying to stay focused. Just wondering, do you have, whether in your training or uh, that you work on or during matches themselves, techniques you use to help you focus, ignore distractions, uh, and, and maybe stay in the moment? Yeah, definitely. I was today, especially when it was like time to close out and the games were getting, you know, close and tight. I was just trying to just remind myself I'm in the better position. I'm the one up a set and double break. And so I was just reminding myself of that. I think sometimes when those moments happen and you just want to finish the match so fast, you can let things triple over. Whereas if it's like one all or two all, you lose the game. It's not that big of a deal. So I just try to remind myself the positioning of the match and you know it's kind of psyching yourself out because then there's times when you're down a set and a break and you have to tell yourself it's okay so it's just really psyching yourself out and then there are some athletes in various sports who work on exercises or things to uh, or come up with tricks to work on focus or not be distracted is there anything like that that you do away from the court maybe um, I mean, I just try to like f do like breathing. Like sometimes I don't do it every day because I'm not as disciplined as I would like. But sometimes just like to lay on the ground and just like meditate, whether it's for like literally a minute or two or 10 or 15, just kind of depends on the day or how I feel. And I think it helps um, just keep you grounded because sometimes in these tournaments, the pressure can feel like a lot to do a lot. And I think sometimes you just like lay on the ground and you just think that, I don't know, that there's like, I don't know, billions of people on this earth and billions of people are, don't know if you're going to, don't even know who you are. So um, the matches aren't as big as they feel sometimes. Hi, Coco. Hi. Um, there's been a lot of talk about crowds here. Um, mm -hmm. You've played on all the great stages of the game. Yeah. Could you just go off sort of free form on the differences on, you know, the big, big stages, uh, what you like, the differences, and also maybe what's the most fun crowd or different, different unusual crowd of some of the smaller tournaments? Yeah, for me, um, yeah, there, I mean, I like big crowds, obviously, and I like when people are, are passionate about the match. And um, I know sometimes during the point, it could be tough when there's like, you know, crowd noise, and especially when it's like unexpected. I think constant noise is better, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, to an extent it's, it's tough because you're watching a match at such high stakes and I can be, I see myself as a spectator, like even when I'm watching my little brother play and you want to make a noise and so it, it is tough sometimes. Uh, and I think for the most part, people are respectful to the players. There's obviously some crowds that maybe aren't, but my favorite court, um, I think, well, I mean, other than US Open, um, I really liked, um, honestly, I liked playing on Susan Longlin the last two days, which uh, I wouldn't probably have picked that answer in, in the past, but I don't know. There's so many kids on, on that court. Um, so they were like cheering for me really loudly, which I wasn't expecting. I, I feel like usually when I play on Longlin, the crowd is more calm and chill. But for some reason this year, I don't know if, if the tickets have <laughs> changed or like, if, I don't know. But there was like every time I played, there was a group of like boys, different boys, but all under like the age of 12. And they were just cheering super loudly. So I actually enjoyed that. And they were respectful to my opponent, which I, I like when it's like that. <laughs> uh, hey, Coco. Hey. Um, 
the coaching setup you have now with JC coming in, yes. I, I guess it's sort of a, a new old coach, yes. um, as it's been explained to me. Mm -hmm. How is the dynamic working um, with Brad, and what do you get from each of them uh, yeah. and sort of bringing him, in bringing him back, what were you looking for? Yeah, I think for me, it's like they both, I don't know how they collaborate, like, because they talk before the practices about what we do in practices, but they collaborate on, you know, the things that I need to work on, and, and JC does a lot of the day-to-day, -day, you know, things, because, you know, Brad isn't at every single tournament, um, so he does a lot of the, you know, day-to-day -day drills and, um, like, being there day-to-day, -day. and I think, you know, Brad is just... He's somebody that kind of oversees everything. Um, and I think he's really good at scouting reports so and making the game simple. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not about, like, what you say. It's about how you say it. And I feel like sometimes the things stick a little bit more um, because he makes the game feel more simple. And I think when I play with a simple mind going into the matches, it just is easier. Um, but, yeah, I'm really happy with how everything has been going. Okay, okay, I wanted to ask you, um, tomorrow Bedosa and Sabalenka play each other and they're super close friends. And I just wanted to ask you what that experience is like playing against a good friend, maybe Jesse, someone like that. And also, I know you've got a lot of close friends on the ATP side, and I wonder if that's almost easier because you're not going to have to play against them in the same way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, it's not really that difficult. I mean, so many times, especially with Jess, we've played and had to play doubles right after. Um, and, yeah, we don't take any feelings on the court. I mean, yeah, it sucks to lose, but you're not mad at – you're never. Even when I'm playing a friend or even somebody I probably don't like as much, I'm never mad at them after I lose a match. It's more so, um, you know, what you can do better. So, yeah, I think most of the girls, I would say like 99% of the girls on tour are very easy-minded when it comes to, you know, playing. I mean, even like Diana, who I – I wouldn't necessarily say we're like super close friends, um, but we talk sometimes. And I played her after Madrid, and I saw her in Nice, and you know I, I won beat one in Madrid, and she was like, "Oh, do you want to go like dinner or go shopping together?" Um, so I think like all the girls are pretty in that mindset of just going hard at it on, on the court and then being fine off the court, which I think that's what you have to do in this life because these are your friends I, or co-workers for the next like 10, 15 years. So you better better get, get along or it's going to be miserable. Hi, Coco. Um, I saw you reposted this on your Instagram story, the video of Cameron Brink um, oh, wearing, yes. wearing your outfit um, ahead of the game the other night. What is it like to see that kind of support and, and what did you think when you saw it? Yeah, it was really cool. I haven't got the chance to meet uh, Cameron yet, um, but obviously been, you know, watching her a lot when she was at Stanford, and now seeing her in the WNBA is great, and I definitely want to try to catch a game. Um, I've, there's a couple of players I want to see, um, and I wasn't expecting it, um, and it was very nice of her. I think she rocked the fit um, better than anybody could have, and um, yeah, I hope, you know, one day, she, you know, maybe, I mean, New Balance is my team. I hope they give her, like, a, a signature shoe one day um, and I can rock it too um, for my press press events and yeah she's awesome. Um, Coco congratulations it's your 18th win at Roland Garros which is actually one more than Chris Abbott managed before she turned 21. I just wonder if statistics like that mean anything to you at all? Um, I mean it's <clears throat> very cool to you know be you know I guess in the same stat line as these great players, but, you know, honestly, they're, you know, they're their own level, I guess, if that makes sense. And, you know, for example, like Chris Ever, I'm nowhere near um, she, where she was or where she is. And, um, but it's very cool. And it does give me motivation because it makes me feel like I am on the, on the right path. Um, but yeah, she's, and she's also like a very nice person and she's definitely re she's reached out to me a lot. Um, but it's very cool to be in the stat line, same stats, I guess, as these great legends. Um, but I try not to like think too much into it because like they're legends for a reason and I'm not near that. Uh, I hope to aspire to be, but you know, I'm not. So I, it does give me motivation to keep trying to do better. Coco, I'm not sure if you got to see some of it because I think you clashed the other day, but the Naomi and Iga match everyone was talking about. If you've caught up with any of it, what did you make as someone who has played both of them at their peaks? 
Yeah, I didn't get to see it because I was playing at the same time. I did watch like a little bit of the first set because I was before my match, um, and but it was very early, so I, you know, it, it it was still good points, but I'm sure nowhere near, you know, towards the end of the match. And um, they're both tough players to play, and um, especially like Ego on clay is a very difficult on any surface, but you know, especially clay, very difficult to play. And and Naomi, um, I've played her I think I've only played her exclusively on hard I believe so um I would say that's her best surface and yeah I've played her right at the year after defending champion when she was defending Australian Open so I played both of them um at strong points in their career but I think it's very cool um to see like especially for Naomi like coming back and I and I know she, you know Clay is was somewhere I maybe not anymore at the end of this tournament but was somewhere in the past that probably was a difficult spot for her um and you know I always root for her and I think you know also coming back from motherhood and for her to put up a level like that against Iga is, is great and um it's good for women's tennis to you know see and good for just women in general to see that you can come back and, and be at the high level and take you know, the world number one to, you know, the brink and um, also good on Iga for getting through to that match. I mean, Naomi's not an easy person to play second round, um, no matter what form she's in. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, I would like to know how you try to manage your adjustments on your technique on the part, like in the off season, you have been working with Roddick. Yeah. I read, do you make it during the tournaments having practically not so much time in between big events? Yeah, I think during big events, um, you know, once the tournament starts, it's kind of just trying to remind myself what to do, but it's at that point all the tweaking and all of that is done. Um, but obviously in between, I'm, I'm constantly trying to make, not just to my serve, but all parts of my game, minor adjustments to, to you know, do better. And, and obviously in the off season, you have more time to make, you know, bigger adjustments, but it, it can be difficult. And I think that's the spot that I found growing up on tour that was difficult for me because I was 15 and, and I'm playing these top players, but it was, it was hard to develop my game, I think, when playing week by week and playing top players. So that is something that I would say um, maybe not if I could do it again, but I think I would just focus on, you know, not results so much, I think, in my head and just trying to, like, to also develop. And I think I got down on myself when I lost a lot. And I'm just like, you were so young, and I'm still young, but you were definitely super young then, and you're still developing. And um, so, yeah, I try to just keep continue to develop as a player, and, and sometimes that ends in some losses, but I think in the long run, it, it'll, be, it'll be important. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. You're going to play an Italian next match, uh, Elisabetta Cocceretti. You played against her in Dubai, and you beat her. She won against uh, Samsonova today, Adat Maya the other day, Kvitova last year. What do you know about, about her, and how do you expect to play against her, knowing her? Uh, her game a bit. Yeah, I played her, uh, yeah, in Dubai, as you said, and, and I, that was a tough match. I, I believe it was like 7-6, maybe 6-2 or 6-1 or something like that. So it was, a, it was a tough match, and I very remember it well. And um, I, you know, I haven't maybe watched a lot of her matches on clay, so I would probably have to go back and see, you know, what adjustments I need to make with that game. And, um, and I know she's a fighter. She fights all the time, and no matter what the score is, she's not giving up to the last point. So I know I have to go in there with a strong mentality.